About 100 people in Kukluktuk, Nunavut, gathered at the community hall, marking the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. To show them that I am here with them. Not for them, but with them. And you're talking about residential school yes. survivors? Yes. The crowd, a wash of orange, because this is also Orange Shirt Day, and its creator, a special guest. Phyllis Webb's dad is a residential school survivor. I'm just so happy to be here. <laughs> I want to acknowledge all survivors here today and also their families. She was six years old when she was sent to the St. Joseph Mission Residential School near Williams Lake, B.C. That's when a gift from her grandmother, an orange shirt, was taken from her on the first day of school. I could be sick or tired or hungry. It felt like I did not matter. What began as a grassroots movement for Webstad has become a personal mission, founding the Orange Shirt Society. What I want to do is to uh, not only be able to tell my story, but I want to hear uh, the stories of survivors and their families and to meet people. Children sent to residential schools also lost much of their cultures, languages and connections to families. This survivor says he is not a white man, something residential school tried to make him into. Inuit were sent to schools and places across the north, first established by the missionaries. So for many, having Phyllis Webstad here in this westernmost hamlet in Nunavut is bringing hope. I feel like it's very... Um, Fitting that Phyllis would join us here in this Inuit community because the Inuit people as I know them are the most among the most resilient and um, supportive and to me that that's also describing Phyllis. Webb's dad says she plans to continue traveling across Canada to keep the conversation going about the legacy of residential schools. Next year she plans on marking Orange Shirt Day in Manitoba. Juanita Taylor, CBC News, Kukluktuk, Nunavut.